Hi, this is Luke from Music Chaos, and today we're going to take a look at unboxing uh, the new 1.5 version of Kemet Blood and Sand. So, what this game is, is essentially a area control game, and it is a highly, highly aggressive area control game. Um, so one of the Kickstarters I had back prior to this coming up was Ankh. And I thought Ankh would be enough for my Egyptian theme, um, I guess, area control game. So I backed Ankh because I had Blood Rage and Rising Sun. So that fit my Viking theme as well as my uh, Japanese uh, mythology theme. And so I backed Ankh. Now, and then this came out. Now, so why did I back this one? This one was one of the favorite games of Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And he has highly recommended this game. And I thought I'll take a look at it and give it a chance. So this highly intrigued me. And one of the, one of the things I did was I went to find someone who originally had a copy. So I've joined essentially a Auckland board gamers group. That's a decent box up. Uh, join the Auckland board gamers group. They have a meetup every Saturday at Dyson Fork at 12 p.m. for anyone who is interested to go. And one of the person there managed to have the original Kemet. And so I gave that a go. I found it quite enjoyable. It was far, I thought I had experience um, area control game. I played Risk. I played Blood Rage and Rising Sun, but Kemet I found was far more aggressive than the other two, to say the least, because the whole point of the game and the only way to get points was to um, attack other players. So you only win victory points by attacking players. So which made that quite interesting, whether it would be better than, than let's say, Blood Rage, where you have variable um, winning conditions. So if you know anything about Blood Rage, uh, you'll know about the Loki strategy, where the way to win points is to actually be a trickster and actually die. Um, and that's how you win glory. But enough of the other board games, let's take a look at this Kickstarter. So one of the neat things they did about this was they made five player guides. I can't underestimate, was it, or was it how important this is? Because when we were playing the game uh, at Dyson Fork, one of the, the problems we had was looking at the, I guess, all the powers, and one of the guys had printed it out in uh, essentially a black and white A4 piece of paper. Having these, so much handier. In terms of Kickstarter and retail, they did say that this is just a Kickstarter exclusive, or there will be some components. The components tend to be these game up ones. Uh, you won't see, I guess, you won't see this in retail as part of as part of this one big box. So what I suspect they might do is is they will have a Kemet box and then a smaller version of this and then add game up and sell it on probably their store or potentially uh, its own retail packaging but I can't see how like this seems doesn't seem like proper packaging so we'll see what happens there. What makes this different to the original version? So the what they did here was they combined a few what is this? Uh, they combine a few uh, components from the expansion. I believe the expansion is called Tar City, uh, which added the Black Pyramids. Uh, so these are all your all your power tiles. Blue. This is white. What is this? Black. No, it's black. Uh, yep. So this is a the board to I believe it's the K 
to your points. And I believe this one here is to cover regions if you have limited number of players. So this is a two to five player game. And so I've got only got two spots, maybe with a third block here. So the, the really nice part about um, this Kickstarter version is they also gave you these trays and these trays will help you quickly set up. So let's see if I can just open up the whole bunch. So let's start with this one. So what they would do is these are four one one mm -hmm. oh. I thought I nearly did this wrong, but I have done this correctly, although looking at this, I should I have done this the wrong way around. So how do you, I know it's the wrong way around? Because this bit here shows it's a level four uh, pyramid. And as you can see, this only has a base, so it's only a level one. I feel like I am just wasting time here, which I pretty much am. Um, so the good thing about this is, like I said, it was uh, essentially for quick setup. You just take it out. It's all nicely set up. Uh, the guy that I had played a copy of, he had a neat setup where he had a essentially a binder. And with the binder, he will just pull it out as required. And then we will all slot it back in the same place. So with this, now cover is a nice quick setup. I believe this will all sit together. In other words, each one does not have its own cover. They all sit in here like one. And each one will represent one of the, I guess, the gem color. I knew it as the original colors, but I believe this is, like I said, uh, a gem color. So, yeah, so what was different was it was pretty much um, the same as the expansion with a new pyramid. So this expansion also added another um, pyramid color. We will see that with Book of the Dead, and that will be green pyramids. So let me check. One, two, three, four, five. So the Kickstarter automatically comes with five. I guess uh, in the hope that you will buy the expansion and I'll be surprised if people didn't buy the expansion. Right, over here is your each player's board. They all come with its own. This looks way better than, than what I imagined they would be. Not sure if you can see, it's a slight, there's a slight indent here. So I guess when you put your components in, they'll sit in there nicely and they won't move about. Maybe I did not hold this tightly enough, but that's only popped up a little bit. So one of the older components, um, the way they represent the pyramid was essentially, um, what was it? A five-sided dice, is it? Four sided dice. Uh, essentially, it was to do a pyramid, a pyramid dice, you just flip it on this, um, I guess, on its base, and then it'll represent um, the number it is. So, what they did with the new one is so they added pyramids that you could actually build. So, it's not Kickstarter without miniatures. Doesn't still focus very well. And then what you do is as you upgrade your pyramid, 
you would put on the next layer. Like so, followed by that one. And last of all, you choose the color that you wanted. Yeah, and so probably do not really show that correctly, but how you know that this is a red pyramid is you put this one upside down. Make sure you can see that properly. Oh, is it too much? Not focusing well. Yep. And as you fold it up, they will look like one of these. So looks like it started with two pyramids here in the bag, which is, well, it has all the pyramid types, but I was expecting three pyramids. Yeah, three? Oh no, there are three. So three pyramids in total. Uh, because every player can control up to three pyramids. Ooh. I really do like these pyramids. I think they look a lot better than just a dice to represent their levels. And this way you can see the progression of what levels the pyramids are at. Followed by that, this is obviously the player for red. Um, as you can tell, there's only four colors here. This is red. The pyramids represent your divinity powers. Uh, red focuses more towards offense, or ruby focuses on offense. Uh, sapphire focuses on defense. Diamond is essentially a, I guess, variable or powers. For the most part, they help discount. It's more an economy type um, uh, divine power. Now, each player will be of one of these army colors. This is the red army. I'm sure you can see that very well. Mm. And the neat thing about these is every army has a different scope. So let me quickly grab each of the army out. So Marago tends to do pretty well with these. They really try to to make it not all the same. So it's not like like some of the other army games where every unit kind of like or soldier looks like the same as every other soldier but different colors cool so highly impressed with what Marago has done this is pretty much a jackal soldier uh, we have Looks like a Horus, considering it's a falcon head. Falcon head. Um, ooh, I'm not as good with my Egyptian goddess of light. I think this is an alligator head or crocodile head. I can't remember who was that. Hmm. But pretty neat. I'm usually pretty impressed with Marago and the fact that they choose to, uh, like I said, have variable amounts of sculpts for their miniatures. Now, obviously, I've got this is the Kickstarter uh, edition, and it won't be a Kickstarter or game without decent components. Hmm. So, this must be one of the monsters in the game. Can't quite recall who this is. 
Then this is a uh, bonus gold. Uh, gold tokens you get with one of your powers. I believe it's... Nope, that was the diamond one. Next. So you'll get that token for this divinity power. There's another gold, well there's a few gold ones, so maybe, what should they, maybe have I mistaken these, I'm not 100% sure, or they seem that there might be five, but there's five silver ones, or the silver ones are these ones, they tend to, so that's how you get an additional silver, so these tokens, uh, I like to think as essentially semi-worker placement. Uh, what you do is on your turn, you will select one of these actions that you're prepared to take, and then you'll put your token on there. Uh, every player will have their own set of tokens, uh, but you can get additional workers or tokens if you were. If you were to buy this upgrade, you'll get a silver one, and there'll be some rules that you have to follow. And then there's extra miniatures, which I'm not 100% sure what these are. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they will be. Maybe it was the, uh, the power of, I guess, the black power or, or obsidian. Uh, yeah. So, one of the reasons why they had to change was because um, <laughs> it was kind of unfortunate they had they had one of the powers under the white divinity and it was for slavery, which obviously uh, did not sit well with the public for the implications that it has, uh, however way you want to think of it, that's, I'll leave that to you. But these bags are pretty neat. They are of a satin type material. It has a picture to say which race you are. So I do like when when companies do this where I can I can easily distribute uh, each player to what they require for the game. So I'll put everything they require in this bag and I'll then pass them this board which makes setup extremely quick and easy. Uh, it goes to show they thought they really thought a lot about about quick setup and the experience for the players and of the game. Just like the divinity trays over here. So it goes to show they really uh, listened to to the audience and they got what what the audience wanted. Let's see what is in here. Not sure if you guys can read this. Uh, so quickly it says, it is with great pleasure that we invite you to discover Kemet, Blood and Sand. If this game is bigger, better and stronger, it's your fault. If you're going to spend your future evenings in schools around game board, it's your fault. We send you a huge thank you for placing your trust in this project. Uh, it is once again your fault. It's a little bit amusing. But yep, apparently how good this game is, uh, is pretty much our fault. Interesting. I'm not sure what will be in here yet, but I guess I will find out. So, now we come to the monsters. So this was a essentially a game up. This is a Kickstarter. Uh, I won't say exclusive because they don't really... They did mention that they don't, they're not really doing exclusive anymore. Uh, if you want this essentially sandworm, you can purchase it from their store. It will obviously come with its own official powers and 
cards and whatnot, which I believe it is what is here. So that here will be the sandworm. And so how this is supposed to work is if you're unsure, you turn it around to the back, it's blue. So what you do is you can replace one of your blue tiles um, with this one. And therefore you'll always have 16 divi divinity uh, power tiles. Uh, otherwise, it is your game. Do as you wish, you can just add them all anyway. But this is additional tiles that can be used with the rest or you can take something out. That was that. Where is the black hole? Ah, that's right there. You see, these are referred to again as game up. So this is a new support monster. It is the black bull or the sacred bull. And it comes with its own power. Uh, one other thing to note there is they try to to make these, uh, I guess, as eligible or legible as possible. And it represents like the number of extra movement they have and extra strength. Uh, but the, the problem with these symbols is you still have to learn what they are. And I guess if you don't know what they are, you can always refer back to the guide. Uh, right. So the power tiles, as I tried to refer to earlier, it is ruby for the red, sapphire is blue, diamond is essentially what was white, and onyx was black. Uh, why have they changed these from the previous color? Which essentially because they had an issue with white power tiles. So I guess originally they didn't really think much of it, um, but one of the power tiles, they've now renamed this as magical support. Let me bring this up for you. This here is magical support. Not sure how clearly you can see that, but essentially this was the slavery um, tile. And what the, the what they said was it can, was it, reduce the cost of your permit when you build a permit by one. Now, using the term slavery and under the unfortunate power of white power, you can, uh, I guess, see the issue with those two combination. So I'm surprised they kept the picture as it is. Uh, I would have thought that they would have tried to represent the, I guess, magical power in a different way if they were trying to avoid that controversy. Um, it's, I guess it's up to everyone how they think as to as to the term, the use of the term slavery, as well as the whole white power piece. Anyway, let's just move on away from a very dangerous minefield. So let's start taking a little bit more closer look at some of the miniatures. So I haven't seen this before, so I'm not 100% sure what this is actually. But this here is your scorpion. And it's a shame, it's, I guess, it's, it's, what's it? It's a shame that it's not to scale. And I guess, how do you represent giant scorpion to scale? Um, but because you can see, it's a little, oh, I should you see that. That's pretty blurry. So for my camera angle, I had to switch the software because the other one wasn't playing well and wasn't picking up my Bluetooth headset. So this one has a little man or figure on top riding the scorpion. But as you can see, one of these, it's, it's not a bad thing, but 
I I would like scale. <laughs> that's I guess that's just my thing. Um, but I guess I can understand why they can't do scale for everything because obviously, what was it you can't really have a elephant and and also take up it will also take up the space on the map. So this here looks like it's the griffin. Is this the griffin? Or maybe this is the sphinx. I can't recall now. So I don't recall there being griffin in the in the Egyptian theme. Uh, this is the phoenix. One of my favorite legendary creature is a is the phoenix. But I'm not sure if I like the sculpt the sculpt for the phoenix that well. I don't know, maybe the beak is a bit too long. Anyway. Like I said, the elephant, funny enough, the elephant's miniature scale, oh, spear is a bit bent, is the people on the elephant seems to be bigger than the guy on the scorpion. Hmm. Here we got, not sure what happened here, maybe it's a mummy. But this is very, very bent. I'm sure you can see that very well. I might have to heat that up and see if I can uh, straighten that a bit, but oh, we'll see what happens. Giant snake. Oh no, this here is a sphinx. So maybe that was a griffin. I don't recall there being griffins in Egyptian mythology. Yeah, I don't believe there's griffins in Egyptian mythology, but who knows? And then the giant beetle. The giant beetle has the same scale miniature as your giant scorpion. Scale that a little bit more. So yeah, the scaling's a bit off. I mean, obviously you've got this elephant here where the the figures are a little bit bigger. So even though this figure looks like it's bigger than the scorpion, um, from based on the scale, the scorpion's supposed to be bigger than this elephant. Right, and then we have. Guess who these are? People or monsters, or not people, obviously not people. Monsters we do not need in an Egyptian themed board game. It is Cthulhu. Yeah, so I do understand the complaint of some of the people is not all games require a Cthulhu, uh, I guess, monster in it, and people are a little bit tired of seeing essentially Cthulhu everywhere. Yeah. This is not easy. Definitely. So from the looks of it, there's a nice little spot here for all your monsters. I'll probably turn it off. Tell you this up later. But these are your obelisk. Oh, that's probably not a great idea. So they're pretty neat. Do you need them? Hell no. Do I want them? Hell yes. Uh, and I'm not sure if you can see this very well, but they've got essentially uh, an engraving on the side. Only on two of the sides though. But it goes to throw, show again, they put a lot of thought into the miniatures and what they've decided to make. So I'm pretty impressed with these. Um, and as I said, even if you get the retail version, you won't be missing out. You just probably have to pay a bit more for the, I guess, what they refer to as the game up components. So here we have the board.
that's the back of the board. Alright, All right, I'll just quickly put the rest away just to create the space so that you can see the expansion. So this expansion is called the Book of the Dead. Uh, it adds essentially two, was it, two new monsters or gods. Uh, and the gods they have here is Thoth, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, and Apophis. Uh, so one of them was obviously the controversial figure of being Cthulhu everywhere. The one was Cthulhu, and I can't remember who the head as the other guy. Um, but yeah, so they are it. Let me just open this. Right, it's a pretty empty box, as you can see. I felt like it's a little bit wasted. Um, I have to say they did very well with some of their essentially packaging and design spaces, uh, but for this expansion, I really dislike this kind of stuff. This shows such a, I guess, a waste. The fact that you've got such a big box and there's like next to nothing in here. Uh, I guess let me just take a quick look. There's a little bit of a rule book of how the expansion will play with its new power tiles, the emerald power tiles. And I believe, let me go find it. Good thing about the Kickstarter version. The emerald power tiles are here. So Still one booklet for everyone. Oh, I did not go through the cards. I'm gonna have to go back to the other one. Yeah. Shortly afterwards. So looking at this. This does not oh I guess they had this board. Maybe because of this board they had to have it this big. Um but I guess do we need that piece of artwork? I'm not 100% sure. I feel like, again, I still feel like it's a bit of a waste of space if they cut that off. I guess make more cardboard pieces seems to be more worthwhile than, than wasting all this space. Um, and chances are, I'll probably store, it's a decent box, I'll store this box away, but I'll probably put all the main components in the main box. Uh, as you can see, there was five of those trays so the fifth tray is for the emerald, so they have catered for it, which is quite good. They've added more monsters. So this was a one of the ones that they you had to vote for. Um, I think what did I vote for? I, I might have voted for the hippopotamus. I uh, can't remember what the who the god was again, but essentially we already had a giant snake, and it's a shame to have another snake uh, miniature. Personally, personally, I would have preferred something a little bit more different, but that's okay. No complaints about that. This is right. It's been a while. I haven't read up on on what this monster does. Or who it is, but essentially it looks like a flying gargoyle. It's pretty neat. And this is this might be Thor or Apophis. I can't remember. What is it? I think this is Apophis. Nope, this is Thor. And the giant snake. Is Apophis. Ugh. Never know I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
All right, that was Apophis. Now, the interesting thing about Apophis is he has a tail section. So essentially, it's saying he is so large that the head can be on one side and the tail is far away on another part of the map. It's pretty neat. They spread it out. Um, I don't think I first saw this with Old Sworn. So I'll have to read up on the rules of how the, the tail piece works and if it does anything super special but we'll see what happens and obviously the additional expansion components the green pyramid for essentially each of the players and then picture tokens one for each player. All right. Hmm. Yeah, let me quickly put that away. Yep. Then, yeah, seems like such a waste of a box just for that. Uh, interesting enough, this came in, in my core box. I'm surprised I didn't just add it into here. Um, I was actually expecting a separate, like, tiny box for this, but I don't know why they've added it to a core box. All right. And normally I don't show cards, um, but because this is a new version, I thought I would just quickly show you the cards. The it looks like the the colors are represented by the triangles, or well, I believe they're meant to be kind of like pyramids on the side. So you can see that that's black. Over here is blue. Uh, originally, I thought maybe it was this, this bar here, but that is only to cover the gaps because, as you can see, this one has all three, and therefore there was no, I guess, color to represent your essentially your faction. Oh. So here's your blues. Looks like some, I believe these are the ones that you can power up, so you can buy the power to use these. And you've got your green faction, red, and yellow, but this looks a little bit on the orange side. All the cards are the same, each player has the same set of cards, um, and then it's just about who uses what card when. Uh, you're essentially comparing attack power, whoever wins will win the combat. And then following that, uh, if you, even if you win the combat, you don't necessarily um, kill all the soldiers on the opposing faction. What the the symbol that that says that you have caused casualty to the other side is this blood droplet by a number, and that's how many units that you manage to cause a casualty to. Uh, and on the defending side, or even as an attacking side, this shield will shows how many casualties you have prevented. So even though you may win by strength, you in theory may not. So if if I had play this card, my opponent, let me get their color version, uh, played this card, and we both have one figure on well, one figure on the board. I mean I have five, he has three, I win the combat. I went to do a casualty, but he has two shields, so he prevents all the, the casualties that I've caused. Which means I've routed his one soldier, and it will stay alive. Um, obviously, there are nuances to how that's played, because you can also, uh, well, you can either choose to retreat your soldier to a different space, or you can, uh, I can't remember what the term is, essentially you can summon him back home. So this is your additional power cards. I don't think there's anything truly special. Uh, artwork, personally, I think it's a bit bland because you can see that that they they kept it at a very minimalistic level, where the only focus is on this middle bit here. Uh, like there's literally nothing real really different with the others. The only thing that is, seems to be a little bit different is you might have seen this unk symbol and the unk symbol is supposed to be the cost and as always 
there is no text on these cards so if you want to know what the cards are you're gonna to have to refer back to your uh, player guide so it had also came with some extras now can't recall because it's been a while but I believe these are your Kickstarter uh, so-called exclusive and I say so-called exclusive is probably because you can probably just buy these all right and then the last thing I'll show you is essentially the player board again so too much this here is the player board it's pretty much of a decent size um, it's what you would expect no complaints here really uh, but for those who are interested this here is the player mat so let's see if I can this so the player mat not sure if you guys can see this very well it is about one and a half times its size so if i move this along you can see that there's uh there's this much extra space down here and on this side it goes pretty much up to here so it's about one and a half size half times the size of the map so it gives you a little bit more playing space if you like other than that the map is pretty much the same uh and the obelisk that i showed you before sits here so you can see the obelisk on these sides and that's essentially where you can put your obelisk in there do you need it not really um, but if you want it to be absolutely clear where your obelisk can go miniatures kickstarters that's what it's all about over here you've got some kind of a essentially it's a scoring board uh, yeah it's pretty much took up most of my coffee table size it's, my coffee table size is about one by one meter uh so last of all storing playmats the i do like my playmats and actually let me show you so this here is the whip it is essentially double stitched decent material one side is quite smooth the other side is uh, essentially more textured to prevent it from slipping around and so on the playmats i have a few playmats i do like them the problem i have with playmats is they can be a bit big and i guess the question is how do you store them so i'm going to show you how i store mine I roll, I put my face down first and then I roll it up. So why would I do it this way? Why would I roll it and have the artwork on the outside? Uh, the reason why I do it this way is because even though the artwork is more likely to be damaged, if you store it in a proper, uh, I guess, playmate bag or even in a container, it's usually pretty protected anyway. Um, but the reason why I actually store it this way is when you unfurl it, chances are your playmat will be curved. Um, no matter how well you store your playmat over time, it will curve itself. This way, if you store it with the picture side up, it will curve downwards. And therefore, and because the mat is, is heavy enough, it will actually flatten itself out. It's not absolutely perfect, but at least it's better at curling forward. Uh, which seems messy on your game board. Once again, thank you for watching my unboxing of Kemet Blood and Sand.